Today, I'm gonna to give you a free training on menu engineering and the nine steps you need to be following to increase your profits, and we're starting right now. Hey there, Dave Allred, The Real Barman here from barpatrol.net. Today, I'm gonna to teach you some menu engineering tactics to help raise those check averages. And I know with everything on your plate, all right, menu engineering, it seems like a lot of work and something that you don't wanna dive into, but believe me, you're going to love it at the end of the month when you have those extra profits to put into your bank account. So let's jump right in. I'm going to minimize myself here. Boop. There we go. So menu engineering training, the nine steps you need to implement. All right. And I love how someone named it menu engineering. Like it's more important than it really is. Like, oh, what do you do for a living? Uh, I'm an engineer. Oh, really? What do you engineer? I don't worry about it. Just know I'm really important. All right. Enough of that. I can go off on a tangent if you allow me to. So the purpose of menu engineering is to increase check averages. Okay, so let's look at this. The value of increasing check averages, let's look how important it really is. And we're gonna keep it simple here, all right? Let's say that your total sales per week are $10,000. And let's say that you have an average of 1,000 guests per week. That makes your check averages $10 per guest. Are you following here? Are you doing the math? That means if we increase the check averages up by just a dollar fifty, which shouldn't be that hard per guest, and the same amount of people come in, and all the numbers are the same, that's an extra seventy-eight thousand dollars in revenue per year. And these are pretty conservative numbers. All right, so let's talk about upselling really quick before we get into the engineering tactics, because this is a great way to get higher check averages. And everyone's heard of upselling; they know about upselling. But the question is. Are you really enforcing it in your restaurant? Are you making it part of your system? Are you making your servers and bartenders ask the questions to get those higher check averages? Or are you just like, hey, don't forget to upsell, all right, whatever, all right, and then you don't follow up and then they never do it, all right, and your check averages go up and you don't get that extra 78 grand. Okay, so upselling. Three simple ways to increase your check averages. First way is, Ask what their favorite brand of liquor is. And this is so simple for the bartenders and servers to do. Okay, someone says, hey, I'll take a vodka cranberry. You say, hey, what's your favorite vodka? Or what, what kind of vodka would you like? What's your favorite brand? And people, four out of five times, are going to pick a brand vodka because they don't want to seem like cheapskates. All right, so they're going to say, oh, I'll take Kettle One or Grey Goose. They're not going to say, uh, just give me whatever's cheapest. All right, especially if, if they're with a date. All right, they don't want to look like cheap asses. So all you have to ask them, hey, what kind of vodka do you like? Oh, I'll have a Manhattan. Oh, hey, what's your favorite bourbon? It's that easy to upsell and, and get the check averages higher and get your profit higher. All right, ask them what they if they want to add on. Do blah, 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 blah. Easy for me to say. Ask them if they want to add on for meals, okay? And this means they order a burger. Hey, do you want to add avocado or bacon to that or cheese? All these are upsells that you can make more money with. And then number three, when asked to recommend something, make sure your staff knows the most profitable items on the menu. This is very simple. Now, that's not to say they can't recommend something that they like. That's fine. But if it's all the same to them, okay, hey, let's really push the monster nachos today or this you know, new cocktail we have on the cocktail menu. Whatever it is that's very profitable, try to get your staff to push that and make sure they know it's an easy way to raise your profits. Okay? Make sense? Upselling? We got it? All right, let's jump into the nine uh, strategies for menu engineering now, okay? Number one, description matters. And I see so many menus where it's just so blasé and just not creative, not exciting. Let's look at these two examples and see which one you would rather have, all right? Austin Sunset, it's a really good margarita. I love it. So you look at one menu and it says tequila, Campari, grapefruit, lime juice, agave. All right, you know what's in it. All right, but it's just not very exciting. As opposed to her Dura Blanco tequila, so you get the brand in there, paired, that's a beautiful word, with Campari, fresh squeezed grapefruit, which gives you a visual, ooh, fresh squeezed grapefruit, not just grapefruit out of a bottle, and lime juices balanced, another great word, with a splash of house-made agave nectar. Anything house-made's gotta be good, right? So a big difference there. Description matters. <coughs> Number two, Blend prices with description. All right, descriptive menu items will stand out and deter guests from looking at prices first. We want to keep those eyes away from the prices. All right, with vibrant descriptions and a small number next to the drink or food items, your guests will often make up their minds before they even see the price, which is what we want. Okay, so look at this example here. 
I love, <clears throat> excuse me, I love this menu, by the way. So in this example, they just put the uh, same price for all the cocktails up here. Okay, it's $13, which might be a little steep at some places, but a lot of places like this is California Gold. This is uh, located not too far from me in San Rafael, I believe. Uh, that's not too expensive. So instead of putting a price next to each menu item here, they just made it all the same. They put it up top, and now I'm looking at the drinks, and I have no prices anywhere because I've already seen it up top. All right, and look at some of these. All right, look at Death Proof. All right, great work starts with oaths from the gods and a little bit of, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but these descriptions are awesome. They're unique. Um, this is a great place to go. And again, no prices next to it, just great description, very unique. So make sure you're getting rid of those prices. Number three, do not use whole numbers for prices. This is an old tactic, but it still works. All right, it's been around forever, but keep doing it. All right, psychologists have shown this tactic still works. All right, so instead of using $10, use $9.95. All right, subconsciously, it makes them feel like they're spending less. All right, you basically keep doing what you're doing until it doesn't work anymore. Until they tell us it doesn't work anymore, just keep doing it. All right, so don't use whole numbers. You can see this example here. All right, they have the French dip and they have $9.95. And they have it kind of small. This is pretty good here. All right, non whole numbers and menu blending. So they have a pretty good description of each of these. And at the end, they put a little number there, but they do it without the whole numbers. Make sense? Okay, good. Number four, do not bold or highlight the prices. This is amateur hour. I see this all the time, too. I know that you're just trying to be helpful to the guests and all that, but it's just, it's hurting yourself. All right, so bolding draws the attention of the eyes. All right, check the next menu example, which is more of a menu wrecking ball than menu engineering. All right, it has both bolding and bad descriptions and whole number pricing all in one. All right, this is like the worst menu I've ever saw. This is an actual menu. Cocktails, Lady Marmalade, Aperol, La Marca Prosecco, $7 in bold, whole number. All right, that's a horrible menu. If that's your menu and you're watching this, get rid of it. Number nine, number nine, number five, do not use a dotted line from item to price. This is also amateur hour. All right, a dotted line is simply a roadmap from the item to the price. All right, y'all remember uh, Dora the Explorer? All right, if you're a parent, you might. All right, and then like, I'm the map, I'm the map, and then the map shows a dotted line to exactly where they're going and your eyes just follow it. All right, do not use a dotted line from the item to the price. And to emphasize this, let's look at another example of another horrible menu. Okay, so as you can see here, follow the dotted line, Boots. You can see the menu item on the left, and then your eyes just, zoop, right, where do they go? Right to the price there, just guide you to it. And this pricing's a little weird here, right, 265 310 I don't really know what's up with that. All right, it does remind me, just follow the line, of those awful dads that are like, you read a book left to right, but when we go out to eat, you read a menu right to left right? Because the prices are on the right. Get it? All right. And also you can see how small the description is. I can't even see the description, but I can see the price. All right. Not a well done menu. Number six, use smaller font for the prices. And you can see here, smaller fonts align with everything else we're doing, which is to de-emphasize the price so that it hides it as much as possible. Okay. This menu actually does a good job. So we're going to show good menus as well as bad menus. Okay, and it's not the like the greatest menu ever, but look, loaded macaroni and cheese, they need some help on the description, but like, where's the price? You can barely see the price. Do you see it? Yeah, it's right there. Yeah, still can't see it? It's right there. Okay, so they've done a good job of hiding their price, and the other thing I like <clears throat> is that they have photos right there, which brings us to our next one. All right, use bold boxes, borders, illustrations, or photos for the items, you know when you walk into a place and you're like looking at people like, oh, what's that guy having? All right, and people are looking like, what are you looking at? All right, you're kind of creepy. If you have it on the menu, you don't have to do that. So you can see this menu back here. They have pictures of the menu items so you can see what they look like, which I really like. So let's look at an example here. In the same way we want to de-emphasize price, we want to emphasize the most profitable menu items by using bold boxes, borders, or pictures. All right, here's the example. And this is great. I mean, where do your eyes go when you pull this menu out? Right to that box. And if you say they don't, you're lying. All right, this is an $18 cocktail, and I'm sure it's very profitable. So right off the bat, we're celebrating 25 years with one amazing cocktail. That makes me want to try it. 
Number eight, identify your most profitable and popular menu items and remove the rest. And this takes a process. This takes a little work on your part, but this is what professionals do to make a lot of money. All right. So I'm going to tell you how to do it here. All right. Step one, you're going to list all your menu items from most profitable to least profitable. And if you don't know this, you need to find, the, find out the cost of each item, how much you're charging, and what your profit is. All right. I want you to list them most profitable to least profitable. Step two, you're going to run a sales data report from your POS for the last three months. So you can get all these sales items. I don't want to do it for the last like two years because they change all the time. All right, step three, you're going to list all of your menu items from most popular to least popular. So what did people, people buy the most? All right, most profitable to least profitable, most popular to least popular. And then step four, you're going to put the most pop, popular and profitable menu items on your menu. All right, duh. Okay, and I have something for this in, in the restaurant mas uh, management masterclass we have. All right, you may have heard of menu engineering matrix, okay, where you put this, and with other ones you might have seen popular, they say like the plow horse and the dog and the puzzle or something like that. So I've created my own, and we call it blue collar, rock star, loser, and princess. And you can see here on the left, these are high profitability, which is good. And then as it goes to the right, it's, uh, I'm sorry, popularity on the left and then profitability on the bottom. And we have a really cool template for this inside the Restaurant Management Masterclass that comes with it. And as you can see here, we're going to list, and on the bottom here, you have bar menu items, appetizer, soup, salads, entrees, and desserts. So you do one for each category. And all you need to do is run your POS report, and this is for November 5th through the 11th. And then you're just going to list how many were sold for each one. And then you're going to put the total cost for each one, what, how much it costs you to make it for all the ingredients in there, and then what you sell it at right here. Those are the only three rows that you need to enter, and now it's going to kick out all this information for you. It's going to give you a popularity percentage, the item profit, the total cost, the total revenue, um, the total profit, and then these two are going to give you whether it's a low or high profitability. Over here... This is also going to be done for you. It's going to classify which menu matrix it's going to go into that I showed you earlier. Okay, Blue Collar, Rockstar. The two highest are Rockstar and Princess. That's going to get you the best profit. So let's go over that really quick. I just want to show you that template that we use that does everything for you. So you don't have to list it all out yourself. You just put your menu items in there, total cost, total price. Everything else is done for you. And it's going to categorize it in one of these matrix for you. So... The blue collar, as you can see, it's high in popularity. Okay, it means it's a hard worker, but it's low in profitability over here on the left. Okay, so that means people are ordering like crazy. Wings are often in this category. Okay, wings cost a lot. So you might have eight wings on the plate, and they're costing you like a buck fifty a wing, and then you're making like two dollars a profit. That's blue collar. We don't like blue collar. Okay, obviously the rock star is the best. It's high popularity. It's high profitability. We want as many rock stars as we can get. <clears throat> all right, the princess. All right, normally you think a princess is good, like a Disney princess, but this is more like the snobby princess. High in profitability. All right, she has a lot of money. All right, but low in popularity. All right, she's a snob, but she has a lot of money. All right, so that's the princess. But we like her, but she's low in popularity, which means this menu item is not getting ordered very much. So what do we have to do to pump that up? <clears throat> All right, do we need to put little menu cards on the table for that particular item? Say, hey, order this. Have the servers and bartenders push it. What do you have to do to kind of push that item because it's really profitable? If it's just a piece of crap and no one likes it, you got to get it off the menu. All right? And then, of course, the losers, they're low in both. You don't want any losers on there. No one's ordering it. It's not very good profit. Why the hell would you even have that on your menu? Okay, so does all that make sense? We want to we identify our rock stars and even our princesses and end up pushing those more. Okay, seems complicated, but if you have a template like we have, it's really not. And then finally, number nine, so we can finish up here, position is important. Scientists in long white lab coats did extensive tests on where guests' eyes go first when viewing a menu. Here are the results. All right, they go top right-ish, then up, then left, then down, and then from there, they just kind of zigzag back and forth in the menu all the way down the menu. Okay, let me give you a visual. Okay, they start top right, then they move up to the top, 
then kind of down toward the middle. There they go to the middle, and then from there they just kind of zigzag back and forth down the menu. Does that make sense? So with that said, where should your profitable items go? Anyone? Bueller? Unless your dole is a rubber knife, it doesn't take much to figure out that your most, most profitable items should go at the top right of your menu. All right? If it's your cocktail menu and it only has one row or even your food menu, all right, then simply put a big box around it uh, and a border near the top, okay, like we showed you earlier. And voila, that's it. So I hope that all made sense. And I hope this training helped you out a little bit. Do yourself a favor. Start implementing these strategies. At least put seven of them in. Put five of them in. Do something to help yourself out. Increase those check averages. Start making some more profit. Okay, I appreciate you being here. If you have any comments, go ahead and throw it in the section below. I'm going to see you next time. You know what I'm going to say. I'm out.